Pastor Zillinger's Daily Devotions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lessons for the Seventh Sunday of Pentecost. From Psalm 123, verse 3. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we have had more than enough of contempt. I think this is something that maybe Christians will pray in their hearts and they don't even know it because they see the world and they see people around them and all it is is people scorn Christianity, scorn the word, scorn what Christ has done, and we bear the brunt of it. We say we're crazy because we believe in creation, that God spoke and that happened in six actual days. Uh, they think we're crazy because the person was raised from the dead. Uh, they think they're crazy because uh, we think that there's a moral code or we think there's some objective truth. And to not bear under it and just to die because of it. That's uh, to say this. It's like, Lord, have mercy upon us. We have this great burden. Remind us again of your miracles. Remind us again of your testimonies. Remind us again of who you are so that we can be refreshed and have joy even when the world seems against us. Ezekiel 2.2, 2, as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet and I heard him speaking to me. I think this is an interesting section, and it's something to note that in the occurrences when people are with God, um, there's this uh, there's this problem that happens. That they can't interact, or they can't speak, or they can't live because they're um, they're dead, or they've fallen over, or they don't have the power for it. Which I think is important to note because it's never about us; it's about what God does. And then God says, "I'll set you up under feet." I will make you speak. I will make you do these things. I will have my spirit enter you. And I think that's important for us to note as Christians that the only good things that we ever do is because of God's spirit, because of what he's done. It's not because of us. It's not because of what we've done or even our efforts or desires. They might follow along with them, but it's because God has done this for us. And that's a great thing. And then you say, oh, I can stand in the presence of God because he has lifted me up. It's not about my efforts and what I've done. It's about what he's done for me. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. What's your biggest weakness? Now, not a weakness of sin where you choose to do something against God. I'm not talking about that kind of weakness. But something you say, you know, this is kind of a character flaw I have or something I don't do real well. And I'm always amazed that I tell people this. I said, oftentimes God uses those things to show people his glory, not the things that you do well. And I think our world, and especially um, maybe American Christianity, focuses so much on the glam, on what we do well, and doesn't focus on what God is doing and the problems that we have and how he's overcome our problems through his grace. And so just pay attention to those things that oftentimes in your worst of moments, like when I have the worst sermon ever, I go, man, that was just really a louse of a sermon. I just didn't do real well. And somebody comes up to me and goes, wow, that was really great. I was really impacted by this. And I'm reminded of this. It's about God's spirit doing these things, not about me and how great I am, not about patting myself on the back. It's about my weaknesses even because God gets all the glory. Mark 6, 12. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. How many times do Christians go out into the world and say to people that they should repent? I think we've lost that. And I think there's an art to it as well. It's an art of not judgmentalism, like, oh, you're going to hell and I'm not. So, haha, you should repent. No, this is a My brother or my sister, my relative, my friend, my person that I live with the planet on and I know, they're dying and I want to help them. How can I help them? You know, maybe you should go to God with this sin you have and you've been struggling with and you think you can beat God and you can't. Just say you're sorry. Just say you want to be different. Just repent. Just get over this pain and heartache that you have and maybe try repenting Uh, and telling people to repent in a little different manner. It's still telling people to repent. We're wrong. God is right. And I think that's important. And a a good way to do this is that in our own lives, to seek this out, do it every Sunday, to do it in our daily devotions, to go, God, you're right. and I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Help me to do better. And then help me to tell my friends and my relatives the same thing. Help me to love them as you have loved me. Help them to see your word and want to be changed. Help them to repent because really that's the best life, to know that Christ is everything in their life. The Lord bless your day as well as your week.